thank you for coming. Uh, thank you, Berlin Buzzword, for this wonderful event. It was a, yeah, a really nice conference to now. Um, so I'm Lucian, and I'm here with Aline. We are from Adelian, which is a company based in France. We are uh, search engineers. Uh, we do training, consulting. Uh, we also build a, an e-commerce solution on top of Elasticsearch. And today we are going to talk about another project that we have that's called Old.Site. So first we wanted to also know you a little more. Uh, we'll ask you a bit of uh, the tools, the search engines you use in your daily work life. Uh, so how many of you use Google daily work? Okay, so quite the majority. Yes. Uh, there is so Bing. Uh, does anyone use Bing for work or for, or maybe okay. for personal? Even nobody. Okay. You haven't so. met the new Bing, right? Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, then how many did try or use sometimes other alternatives like uh, DuckDuckGo, Ecosia, Quant, our friends here? Okay, a few people, <laughs> I, I would say maybe 25%, nice yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a large number. And also for your work, do you use uh, search engines on your space, special, your personal, you know, the tools you use, like, for example, uh, elastic search documentation, whatever documentation website, uh, directly on Stack Overflow search or anything like this? Okay. So you use searches available on specific websites, like Wikipedia. Okay. Yeah. Great. One last question. Who uses ChatGPT for work? You ask questions to ChatGPT? Yeah. 25% also. Yeah. OK. So uh, throughout this talk, uh, we will uh, like talk about search engines, about uh, new, bond, new models for search engines. Uh, you also saw uh, the presentation from Quant earlier. Um, we, we will talk about yet another model, and uh, we will also talk a lot about uh, challenges being functional or technical, and also um, the feedback that we have uh, when we tried to go through, through this path. We will try to demo as much as we can. Um, we also have slides like showing the parts of the demo in case uh, something goes wrong, but we will try as much as we can to be like, uh, so I will switch between, we will switch between slides and demo quite often. So first, let's talk about advertisement, uh, which is really a part of search. Uh, here you have examples of uh, some searches we did just to prepare this special talk on uh, google.com. So, for example, here I searched for kindergarten, you know, for my kids in Berlin. Uh, and as you can see, the first links and the first page, uh, the, the, all the, the page of results I see are sponsored and marked that, like, like this. And below that, I have like a, a map uh, of results. And the first relevant, uh, really relevant uh, result I have is even lower. So I don't really know what I'm shown, you know, if I really have the, the, the current, uh, the thing that I was looking for, or just ads. Then here you can see the, the iPhone search. So there it's really a, a product presentation to directly click and buy, buy it. Uh, the same below, I have the Apple ad, you know, and, and then I can find some information. Uh, but it's really uh, oriented to buy it. And in the end, I, I sh also for culture and all that, everything is just uh, uh, you know, presented so that I don't have to uh, even get out of Google.com. Uh, for example, if I'm looking for, for Tom Cruise movies, I already have the answer with the list of movies. I can also order by, by date. Uh, I, can, I can show, decide the way that it's presented so that I get the information without navigating anywhere else. So really, it's taking uh, over my own uh, power on the websites. Uh, also, so here you have an example of an iPhone search on the Google page. You can see that the whole page uh, is very, uh, contains a lot of things that are actually not really search engine results. Uh, you can see the ads. Uh, you also have SEO, so every company that uh, decided to you know, improve 
the, the um, order and the ranking of their products or their pages. Uh, for SEO also, um, there is something very important, which is compliance. Like, you have to um, respect Google's rules to appear here. Uh, we had an example with the, you know, in, in France and worldwide now, there is a, a, a comp mathematics competitions for, for kids, yeah. which is very uh, known, very well known and reference. Everyone knows it. It's called, called, called the kangaroos of mathematics. And uh, the website is, oh, well, like this. I think it hasn't changed things since I was in college and uh, did the, the, the competition myself. Uh, but it's so just a quick question: Who knows about this contest, <laughs> this math contest? French. Okay, so you know it. Yeah, that's uh, that's great. Yeah. Probably yes. So, so, so actually, because of this, uh, because this website is considered like not secure, it's not compliant with Google's no. rules, and this website is indexed by Google, but it's really like uh, downgraded in, term, in terms of relevancy. And it's actually a, a great resource for learning math, uh, like when you search for resources to teach math, math to children. Uh, but it will not appear in the first page because it's not compliant. So yeah, this is just a parenthesis mm -hmm. on compliance. Yeah, that's it. Then you've got uh, everything powered by Google that, you know, the ranking, you don't really know how they do it at the end. Uh, compliance, I, I talked about it. SEO uh, is like the corollary of that. And the personalization. So your personal data used for the ranking. At the end, we don't really know where is the relevant results. We anticipate a little bit these resources are known by experts. So those who know know that this is a great resource for learning math. So this is something to remember for, the, for what we will see, you will see next. Yeah. Um, I was talking about Bing. Actually, Bing evolved a lot lately, and especially uh, after they integrated uh, OpenAI into Bing. Uh, it's, it's advancing really, really a lot. Uh, maybe I can also show some... OK, so it's not really the subject, but... Uh, on Bing, actually, advertisement is even more subtle. I don't know if you noticed here, this is an advertisement. And to make things even less like, uh, clear, they put a, a, a tag here also on real results. Just to say, OK, between ad and web, oh, it's kind of like the same thing, you know? So, well, yeah, so it's really, you, it, it really deactivates your... Um, your mindset like, OK, this is an advertisement, so I'll scroll down to see the, search, the real search results. You know. Maybe it's also ma made for, uh, for uh, anti-advertisement uh, software and stuff like that, but yes. And uh, yeah, if this is an update that they did yesterday, if you look at this. So there's this disclaimer here that says that what comes here is advertisement. You don't have any other disclaimer. This is ads, 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 until this is also add until until you have this tag here, which is web. Okay, so all these are okay. So quite like subtle. Okay. Now imagine for those of you that use ChatGPT that you have this one day. <clears throat> you don't know how ChatGPT will evolve. They are being integrated ChatGPT into Bing. Um, Microsoft integrates ChatGPT into Bing. So, yeah, you just ask, should I use a VPN? Yes. Which with VPN should I use? You should install NordVPN. Why? Because, because, yeah. Well, okay, that's convincing. Yeah, I mean, your language sounds convincing, so I, I, I'll do that. So this ends the <coughs> sponsored part of the chat. Do you want some other results now? So, yeah, these things can evolve this way. <coughs> this is really subtle. Yeah, and just to recall, uh, Google themselves, the founders of Google, in their, uh, you know, thesis, uh, when they just started Google and, and published uh, this, this wonderful paper that was the, the roots of their search engine, talked about advertisement in an appendix and said that it would just make the, the search engine wrong. Uh, I let you read a bit the the different things and uh, apply it, but uh, of course you can find it on the web. It's, it's a delight to read, really, uh, because that's them uh, saying that, for example, it's not clear 
when you use advertisement, uh, who deserves to be there and who is willing to pay money to be listed. And this uh, is shown as a problem by the founders of Google. Uh, and even uh, the, the last, in the last part, it's written by them, again, that we believe the issue of advertising causes enough mixed incentives that is crucial to have a competitive search engine that is transparent and in the academic realm. We are very far away from this, I let you judge. Uh, so this is why we uh, at Adeline uh, said, well, let's look for an alternative. Uh, and there are a lot, which is good. Uh, there is a lot of alternative. We have, of course, our wonderful friends of Quant who are here, uh, you know, trying to you know, find search engines that don't use your personal data, that are respectful, ethical. You also have Ecosia, for example, that uh, combines also with uh, you know, convictions about climate change and all that. Uh, there is really good um, you know, initiatives there. But again, it's still based on the advertisement business model. Uh, you also have uh, the different, you know, new approaches. Like, for example, well, when we did the, the slide, it was really not, not much time ago, but uh, first of all, uh, Niva was uh, trying to make users pay for the for right. end users pay for the search engine. Niva had the same business yeah. model at ChatGPT today. It's the end users that pay. Mm -hmm. uh, so unfortunately, that didn't work because Niva was no. acquired uh, and they stopped yeah, the service. Yeah. Uh, you also have, for example, pre-search that combines uh, search with uh, some, some uh, back uh, remuneration with uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain. Uh, so yes, you are all this part trying to find a new model. You also have enterprise search that is uh, aimed at uh, searching into your data and, and connecting to different uh, uh, data sources. And you have some, some I would say, uh, in a very uh, nice way, aliens uh, who are ESC, for example, which is a totally peer-to-peer -peer open source uh, free software for search engine, like you, 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 you own your crawler, you, you just share with others the different crawler. It's still a bit... Um, uh, confidential still, but yeah. it's existing. You also have Data Fari for who, the enterprise search part. Who uses Yassi here in the room or knows about Yassi? Okay, there are some people. Yeah, yeah okay. We like have more, a question for time. you. Why, why didn't Yassi work? So we, yeah, we leave the <laughs> question to, to the end. Okay, so uh, yeah, what would be the alternatives? Because we saw that uh, making uh, asking end users to pay might work. ChatGPT works like that today. Niva tried to do that. It didn't work. Um, yeah. W what would be uh, some other alternatives for that? So um, we thought about the following thing. We said there are companies that uh, actually pay a lot of money to build their own search engines. I don't know how many in this room are consultants. You help companies to build their infrastructure and all that. We help companies to build their own search engines. So we have uh, companies that pay to build their own search engines. They also pay to, uh, uh, to Google and Bing, to, and they invest in SEO, they invest in advertisement in order to be seen, to be referenced. So we said, let's give the power to those people. And also you have like moderators on the internet uh, Wikipedia works like that, Reddit works like, works like that, until Elon buys it, I don't know. Um, you heard about the <laughs> recent strikes on the, by, uh, by Reddit uh, moderators. So we said, let's bring this together and construct a new model where the, the power is to, to the users, to the moderators, to the companies that build search engines, so those that, uh, that have the data. Yeah, for this, we, we were really interested at the, at the very beginning by social networks, like, for example, Twitter, hit a, a screenshot of Mastodon, which is the same, uh, functionally, I mean. Uh, and the fact that you can select the sources that you trust and you want to hear about. 
So the, there is really this notion of uh, you know, people that I follow and I can see the, the information given by these people and the, there is like this kind of well, uh, influence of uh, people that have a lot of followers because maybe they are experts in some domain or something like that. So really I can build myself an interesting uh, place where I can find really information that is relevant to me. There is also the, the notion of time, you know, with the, 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 the things coming uh, at, the, at, the, at the moment we need it. So really we inspired ourselves on the, on the social networks part uh, to say, let's trust the people uh, that know about they, their domain and follow them, this mechanism of following and, and getting followed. So I was speaking about experts. Uh, how many of you use solar in, in the room? Okay, so quite a few people. This is a, a search and data conference, so you, you are familiar with solar. So uh, what we want to show here is how is it, 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 it is difficult for someone like Google, like Bing, to correctly index something that the experts know very well. So uh, for those that are familiar with solar, uh, you know that the there are several versions of Solar and the guide, the Solar Reference Guide, which is uh, really important for someone that develops with Solar, is kind of like this. You have the new versions after version 9 that is under this type of page. Then you have the older versions that have another website, it was before the split, uh, that looks like this. And it's really different. The search is different. Uh, yeah, you see here, the search is for version 9 is here. So for version 8 is dif different. And for older versions, and for some also versions up to 8.1, you also have this website, okay, with um, the reference documentation in PDF. Okay? Now, if someone asks a question about Solar and says, okay, I want to find that thing or solar. Uh, it will be very difficult for someone that do not, does not know solar, it's not an expert in this technology, to make the difference. I mean, you can put any machine learning you want there, it will be just like generated text and all that. You could have the right answer, but you could also have the wrong answer. And let's get back to another example for those that use Elasticsearch. This is an example for uh, the scroll API. So imagine, um, you, you end up on this page, and you actually end up here after making this query here. Okay, this is uh, this is on Bing. Uh, on Google, you have the same result. So it's uh, I, I choose Bing here because the result is more complete. As you can see, the integrated Chat GPT here on the right. But anyhow, you ask a question about Elasticsearch. And you say, OK, this is the answer. And you click on the result. And actually, you end up uh, on something li like this. And you say, to use the scroll uh, API, I have to do this and that. And you say, OK, I will implement my, my uh, scrolling of the results with this API. And actually, you're, you're all wrong, because in Elastic, the version counts a lot. This is 7.9. I, you might not use 7.9. You, you might use a newer version, let's say 7.10 if you want, and in 7.10, you have a disclaimer here that says, scroll search results, they are no longer recommended. Okay? So the experts know that the version number in the Elasticsearch documentation is very important. So this is the first question to ask the user that asks you the question. Okay? So when they ask, how can I retrieve all the results from Elasticsearch query, actually an expert will ask, which version of Elasticsearch are you using? Okay? So, Let's move on to, to slides. Um, yes. So yeah, that's it. We did, we did it. We decided to make a, a website, uh, which would be a collaborative search engine, where, uh, for example, you're passionate of astronomy. Uh, you become an admin of the astronomy search engine, and you choose your sources uh, among the ones you trust, you think are relevant to people. And then you have followers that can access your search engine that are themselves maybe fans of sports or whatever, and can uh, access also tools to administrate their search engines and search through the web. Uh, the admin will know that a page that is not secure 
is maybe very relevant. Uh, mm -hmm. The admin will know that uh, when you are searching throughout the Elasticsearch documentation, the version is very important. Yeah. The admin will know that the documentation for Solar is structured quite differently between different versions of Solar, and so on, so on. So yeah, just okay. no. um, So how it works? We here listed some functional challenges. We will uh, go through them. Uh, right now, so we'll talk about question answering, citing data sources, how you summarize stuff, uh, the va various data sources, because we try not to go only on the web pages, uh, tools for curation, transparency, and uh, factuality. Yes, so we set the bar quite high, but we said if we build another search engine, what it would be? What should, should it be? So we have to actually comply to these things, because users are like asking for these things. So we will show a little bit how we implemented that and what we tried to implement that or how we tried and we failed uh, and so on. So first of all, uh, first one, this is really simple, we go very quickly through it, is uh, question answering. So question answering is something that Google introduced with BERT a few years ago and it's the thing that actually goes beyond a list of links that give you the, the, the path to the, to the answer. So the search engine used to give you a list of links, and the links contain the answer, contain the truth somewhere, but you have to click on them and then search that, and so on. So question answering is like summarizing the link and, uh, and, and giving you the answer, okay? Uh, so yeah, I won't click on it, it, uh, it's, it's, uh, it works like that. Uh, well, we actually, in order to respond to this kind of like feature, uh, we have a quite uh, extensive um, demo here in this talk. I just took a few slides from this one. Uh, I'll let you see the details here, but uh, we actually use a Hugging Face uh, with uh, machine learning models that we took from Hugging Face. Hugging Face is the um, is not the MOG, is the, the AI community for those of, of you that do not know. Uh, is a is like a, the, the GitHub of, of machine learning. Uh, so in Hugging Face, you can use easily a question answering models that give you the right answer into a piece of text. And you also have gen generative question answering. This is something that, that Google uses uh, that will actually construct a phrase that contains the result that uh, the, the, the answer to your question. Uh, and yeah, for the implementation, we actually uh, send the query to the, to the search engine, we get the uh, highlighting, you know, the, the, the fragments that the search engine, search engine returns, and based on those fragments, we launch the question answering model, and then we see if the, the threshold is high enough, and, uh, and we, we display the result. And it gives something like this, so the code is really simple, like, you know, you, we iterate through each fragment, that's the highlighting, returned by the search engine, by the search technology that, that's underneath. And then we, we launch, launch the, the model. If the score is high enough, then we have the answer, we stop. Okay, so for example, if you ask this thing here, uh, you maybe didn't notice, but this result came a little like it was slower to appear because it, it requires some additional processing. So you have the results here, and actually you have here the answer to your question that was extracted from somewhere from these results here. Okay, so this is how it works. You can really do this at home. Uh, just look at this presentation. And uh, yes, um, I told you about Bing that uh, is much better than Google now, and it's true. So this is the same thing, that the same question, when was the euro introduced? And actually, you, you have some things here that looks like noise, like the, because actually there's some ambiguity, what kind of euro are you talking about? And, and they are kind of bringing more. And you have also chat GPT that pops up here, and you have generative uh, answers that, that make here. And this is something that's, uh, that's, that we try to do because we try to, have transparency as a search engine, and Bing also does that. Um, you see here, it's not just generated text, because you know, you ask questions to that chat GPT, you can have wrong answers. It actually, they are documented, and they give links like that in the text, 
Okay, you see how it works? Uh, they are documented. So yeah, this is the. Uh, what I wanted to show in this slide is that the fact that Bing actually crosses the results. It will not just take the first result, with, which might be relevant or not, and actually says, okay, it's 1st of January 1999, according to four sources, okay? This is different from this, that is according to one source, okay? So this is crossing the results. So this goes beyond. And then you have the LLM here, and you see I asked a different question, when was Berlin Buzzword funded? It's more, it's more difficult to respond with BERT, but ChatGPT can answer that. And it also gives the, gives the, um, uh, the sources uh, of that. Uh, yeah, so how do we implement that? Uh, this is another example, and I wanted to show you how do we implement that. So this is a, another question, which is quite technical something that usually uh, people ask in their companies. For example, the question here is, how much time do I need to keep the physical invoices for accounting? So the answer is five years. Actually, if you ask the same question in France, it will be 10 years. But anyhow, you have this here, and you have ChatGPT that answers and gives you the results. And here's how they do it. You have a prompt. You have, a, you have heard a, of... of a, Okay, so this is, ah, okay, this is the strike on Reddit. Okay, so, actually, the, there's a prompt on ChatGPT that uh, actually forces ChatGPT to work like this. And I will show you another one that's simplified, that actually, uh, uh, we find it here in this conference. It's, it's really a great keynote. If you can uh, look at this talk, it's, it's really a great, great, great keynote. And it goes like this. This is the prompt that we give to ChatGPT, we say, web search results. Here's the first result, the second result, the third result, and so on. The first page, for example, the first 10 results. Instructions. Use the provided web search results. Write a comprehensive reply to the given query. Make sure to cite results using number URL notation after each reference. And you get something like this, if you notice here. Can I click on it? I don't know if I can show you this in live. So this is my text here. This is my prompt. I submit it. And you can see the demo effect. No, OK, here it is, the reference that's, that's given here, and the second reference that appears somewhere here. And this is how it works. OK, and you can do this, you, you can do this actually without ChatGPT also, uh, just with hugging face and models. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I will be quick because we have a few time remaining. Uh, so for this part, just to say that uh, the results and the important things are not only on the web. Uh, well, they are on the web, but not only on the sites. And for example, when you are expert in a do domain, you are, for example, on some slacks or, you know, private communities, but that are open to everyone. So that are the content is not uh, aimed at being actually private. And uh, the, these sites are not directly crawlable. You have to build connectors to them and then get the API and get the results in it. So what we did, for example, for Slack, uh, we indexed uh, some open Slack uh, repositories and uh, could, could uh, link them in the search results. When you click on a, on a Slack link, you can uh, directly access the Slack community where it was yeah. fine. So this is the same thing as, as we, were, we were mentioning, experts yeah. know. So actually for search engine developers and uh, search engineers, this Slack particularly is a great resource. And it's not on the web. Google doesn't no. have access to that. But the administrator of this Slack that allowed us to, to, to crawl the Slack, which is public, you can subscribe and... Uh, Yes. Uh, uh, so, yeah, you see here the, the icon slightly changed, and if you click, actually, we, you will end up, so it opens my, my desktop application, but you actually are redirected to the Slack channel that gives the result, the, the, the response to, to your query. So, yeah, it's just one response among the others, but it might be a greater resource than something you find on the web. 
Okay, so we don't have much time, so I, we will go really fast on this, uh, uh, just to, to see so, uh, what are the other challenges, being functional or technical, that we try to implement, and uh, to leave some, some, some time for questions. So, as a search engine, as a modern search engine, you, dis you, you need tools for data curation, because administrators of a search engine need to like, uh, put the data into a certain format, and they need tools. They need like uh, tools to add synonyms, to add extensions, to add taxonomies, to pin results because they know that that particular result is very relevant for that particular query, so they pin it, so it appears on top. Uh, you need like feedbacks on that and, 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 and all that. So all these things that are on the, on the left, the, these are things that are available for administrators. Um, and this allows you, for example, when you search for the solar documentation, uh, to have something like this, where you have the source, you know that it, it's a blog post or is a reference document, and you can also tell the, the version and, and, and so on. Um, yeah, we actually uh, talk about many things that allow you to enrich the data sources in this talk here. You can take a look at that. Also, it's very detailed, all the, all the elements that you need to enrich your data sources with Elasticsearch, but you can do it also with OpenSearch. We'll do a version with OpenSearch equally. Yeah, another challenge is transparency. And for example, like I said before, ranking in, in Google and in traditional search engines is obscure. Like it's their secret source. And they say it in, uh, in some training videos. They say Google's ranking is top secret. We will not tell about this. We wanted to reverse that and give the ranking information back to their users. Like if, a pro if something comes uh, at this place on the ranking, why? So we try to open at the maximum the configuration of the search engine, uh, the sources, the results, how relevancy works really in inside and how data is enriched. So for the configuration of the search engine, we try to get the same model as, uh, for example, GitHub. Uh, like uh, you can provide like a pull request to a search configuration, you can watch it, you can fork it, and you can work together uh, like openly on search engine configurations. Another topic was, of course, the factuality, like providing how to make sure that we provide reliable data sources. So um, the thing is done by, you know, you have to know a little about the experts you trust and follow. Uh, we should find a way to track the reliability of data sources. And here we linked to our friends Benjamin Radu, uh, who could make yeah. the way till here, this but is, we're just talking before us. This about, is a talk um, that already happened, so if you want to see it, watch the replay. It already happened at Buzzwords this year, but <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, so. So okay. then we had a lot of uh, information, technical challenges we addressed. I think we will just slide them very quickly. Yeah. Uh, we will stop here. <laughs> we have a lot of technical um, yeah. things that we wanted to also share. We can share them like uh, if you want uh, afterwards. We have issues on scalability. We have issues on uh, like enriching documents and updating the index constantly. Yeah. We had issues with security because when you index things like that, even the Slack, the public Slack channel that we showed actually is subject to some conditions and terms of use and the administrator has to agree and all that. You cannot just publicly display what's inside that Slack channel, even though it's publicly accessible. So yeah, we have, you have issues like that that we have to handle. Duplications, uh, this is still a, something we're working on. For example, and, and with Google, you have to be compliant with their rules, like you must not duplicate content on the web. We tried another approach not to, uh, you know, to allow this, because when you have as, as well multiple sources, of course you will have duplicate content. Uh, that's so yeah, this is what we are working on. The next steps, uh, you know, the site is online. It's ready to test. It's a technical preview still, so be nice with us. But we appreciate all the feedback you can send. There is a page also where we can send it. And we are really uh, looking forward to see you there uh, and uh, to count you among the, the testers of all sites. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>